And we are here. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Are we? Oh, yeah, we're on gallery view. Hi, everybody. Oh, it's always so exciting. Like, we're on Zoom and like you see all, all the people come in at once, you know? It's exciting. Good evening, okay. everybody. Oh, you see people coming in? Yeah, if you click on participants um, on the bottom, oh, okay. it, it pops up on the right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hello, Barbara, Betsy, Bonnie, Deanna. I recognize some. Hi, Howard. Sydney. Eileen, Joseph, <laughs> Libby, Libby, Lynn Norton Robbins, Lynn, Panina, Sydney, Susan, Susan. Sylvia. Wow, you're going through all of them. <laughs> Hello, all of you. <laughs> okay. Hi, guys. We're gonna we're gonna get started in just a minute. We're just gonna wait uh, for any latecomers, but yeah, we'll just give it one more minute. Well, we hope that you're all vibrant. doing well, and we hope you're super excited about the festival. Yes, 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 yes. We hope and so. We, we can. And, oh, God. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, yeah, we cannot believe it's this Sunday. It's just absolutely nuts. It's just, it, it's been like a crazier year than last year for us. So, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. So, and if, and if we sound, you know, like you, if you don't understand something that we're saying to you at the end, when we allow ample time for your questions, just say, Hey, can you explain that poem again? <laughs> I did not get what you were saying. So <laughs> we will, we will do our best to tell you, um, or explain everything that you want to know about in the yes. festival. <laughs> if we also pass out from exhaustion, um, <laughs> it's, it's okay. <laughs> we'll wake up. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so we'll get started. So hi, everybody. For those who don't know me, my name is Matt Bussey. I'm the program and digital marketing. I have a new title. I'm sorry. Program and digital marketing manager for Philadelphia Jewish Film and Media. I'm joined by Olivia Ansis, the executive artistic director. Welcome to the virtual curators night. So the way this works is I'm going to share my screen. We put together this nice little PowerPoint. Uh, with info on each of the films and events that we're going to be showing uh, this season at the 41st Philadelphia Jewish Film Festival, which begins this Sunday to November 20th. Um, before we begin, and you'll see this in the PowerPoint, I just want, um, well, two things. All questions, if you guys have any questions, you're more than welcome to ask them. We're going to get to them at the very end, though. So you can ask them Preferably, there, there's, you should see a Q&A option. Preferably, if you guys ask them there, that would be better because if you ask them in the comments or in the chat, I mean, it might be hard to find them, um, you know, if like everybody's commenting and asking questions at once. But uh, yeah, we'll get started. Oh, yeah. Well, the second thing I just wanted to let you guys know, and you may know this already, uh, the Jewish Film Festival this season is a hybrid. So what that means, I know it's a fancy word, but basically what it means is that we're virtual, virtual, and we are in person. So the majority of majority of our films are going to be streaming like we did last year, like we've been doing all year, but we do have a couple films that are both streaming and you can see them in person at like the Jewish Museum or the Philadelphia Film Center. We have a few films that you can only see in person. We have a few films that you can see in person, but you can stream them, but for one night only, one time and one night only. So we're calling those virtual live streams. You'll see it in the PowerPoint, um, you know, as we as we uh, go along. But yes, let's get started. So I'm going to share my screen. Oh, here it is. Share screen. All right. Do you see a PowerPoint, Olivia? Mm, hold on. Oops. Oh, I got. Oh, wait. Hold on. Sorry, I'm not on the first page. <laughs> there we go. Hold on one second. Do you guys, the viewers, do you guys see a PowerPoint? It, it's our Fall Fest banner. All right. Yeah. So yeah. Okay, I am situated. All right, so let's get started. This is our amazing banner that our intern made for us. Uh, we're going to start off by talking about our in-person screenings. So like I said, some of these are going to get repeated. 
So we're just gonna begin by uh, talking about them. So here we go. All right, well, I'm up first with Wet Dog. Um, when I first saw this movie, I just knew it was the perfect film to launch our two week golf festival. For one, its subject matter could not be more timely. Anti-Semitism is unfortunately very, very sadly, once again on the rise in America and Europe. And this story based on the autobiography of a German Iranian Jewish graffiti artist turned spokesperson for the IDF is about a 15 year old Iranian Jewish teen who moves in with his family to wedding a predominantly Muslim neighborhood on the outskirts of Berlin. He eventually earns his place amongst a street gang made up of Turks, Arabs and Kurds, but he soon discovers that his new friends harbor anti Semitic beliefs. This is a coming of age film that is so high energy bursting with passion, music, and heart, you're absolutely going to love it. There's romance for those of you who enjoy a good love story. There's action for those of you who can't resist a good fight scene. Most of all, the film is truly an expression of the director's love, his love of cinema, the love of a powerful story, and the love of his cast, who are mainly made up of non-professional young German actors. and. I learned by interviewing this whole filmmaking team, which you can catch as bonus content if you're watching the live stream. Um, actually, it comes on right after the film. You just keep watching and you'll see the Q&A just pop up in the live stream version. Um, I learned that the entire cast actually had to play all of the roles. They had to take turns playing every single role in this film so, they, so that they could understand every character's perspective and really feel that these characters are real because they were based on a true story. So I highly recommend that everyone sees our opening night film. I think you're gonna love it. And again, this is playing at the Philadelphia Film Center, 7 p.m. this Sunday. November 7th. And just so you know, this theater does require vaccination cards and there is some socially distanced seating. You'll mm -hmm. be asked to present your cards and your ID when you come in and you must wear masks at all times, except for when you're eating or drinking. So take note of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at the film center, they have every other seat taped off. If you guys are interested in coming, as you'll see though, you can stream this movie, but we'll get to that in a few slides. <laughs> yep. Up. Up next, we have The Conductor. This is showing Monday night at the Ethical Society. And this is, an, this is gonna be an excellent documentary. I think everybody's gonna like it. I think it will especially appeal to music lovers and champions of women's rights. Um, it's a classical yet refreshing underdog story. It takes you on the emotional journey of Leonard Bernstein's protege, Marin Alsop, as she rises to international prominence as the world's first female conductor. It's personally one of my favorite documentaries in the festival this season due to its um, captivating direction and the inspirational subject. And the fact that it's filled with beautiful classical music does not hurt. So trust me, you don't want to miss this film at the Ethical Society on Monday, November 8th at 7 p.m. Now this screening, you don't need to be vaccinated, but you have to wear your masks at all times and it is limited capacity in as an in-person screening. So I hope you join us. The conductor too, I hate to say we could only get it for in-person. We're not able to stream it. So it's totally up to you guys. I just, we just want to apologize. We really do wish we could have shown this, you know, streaming, but you know, this is such a good movie that after the festival, it will probably be available if you're not comfortable coming to the in-person. So, our next film that we're showing in person is American Birthright. We are showing, showing this Wednesday, November 10th at Namaj, the Jewish Museum. American Birthright is just such a fun, lighthearted, easygoing, very relatable movie. It's a documentary by this incredible young filmmaker that's her in the picture, Becky Tahel Bordeaux. It's a movie about her and she kind of goes on this journey of, of discovery to learn more about Judaism. And this all kind of happens when her sister marries um, out of outside of her faith. And, you know, interfaith marriage for some 
Jewish people, they don't think it's a big deal. For other Jewish people, they find it a little bit taboo. So the movie kind of explores that and it really ends up becoming, I think a movie that anybody can relate to. You know, Becky ends up having this just incredible, I guess, sort of like not an existential crisis, but just this amazing experience, you know, and it's set, uh, a lot of it is filmed in Israel. Some of it is locally filmed. She's from Philly or she lived in Philly for a while. You'll see Temple Beth Hello Bethel was briefly featured in the movie. Uh, it's so much fun. I'm going to be interviewing Becky as well. She's going to be coming to the theater so you guys can um, meet her if you'd like. And yeah, fun. That's just like the best word for this movie I can think of is it's just fun. Definitely a good movie. The specials, um, I'm very, very biased because I love absolutely anything that is French. If you love French cinema, if you love tearjerkers, if you love comedy dramas, this is the perfect movie for you. You may recognize this actor, Vincent Cassel. He is a very prolific uh, French actor. He was in Black Swan. Uh, this movie also, if any of you guys have seen the movie The Untouchables, uh, it came out 10 years ago. It's like one of France's like most highest grossing movie ever basically uh and you can tell the directors you know they have a theme in their movies that's very prevalent uh this one is beyond moving we basically follow uh these two characters i believe this is based on a, or inspired by a true story too mm -hmm. uh yeah it, Vincent Cassell plays um, a Jewish man and this act, this other actor, uh, Red uh, Kateb, I don't think I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing that right. He plays a Muslim. They're both best friends. They both live in Paris and they run this uh, organization for young adults with mental uh, disabilities, young adults on the autism spectrum. Uh, it's so beautiful. It's just honestly a touching movie. Um, this and The Conductor are the two films that we were only able to get in person. So I know Ambler, for some of you guys, it may be close, for others, it may be too far away. Again, we understand if you're not comfortable going. If you are comfortable going, 100% see this movie. It is going to be so incredible seeing it on the big screen. Uh, it's just, yeah, it moves you, absolutely moves you beyond words. All right, I'm up. <laughs> so Journey of the Lost is a German play by Dan Kelman, and it's specifically staged for the big screen. It's really an enthralling experience for those that for those of you that are going to be able to get tickets because Bryn Mawr Film Institute is actually very limited capacity. So there's only 50 seats for this screening and for oh, 65 those, actually. Oh, they just added some. <laughs> nice. Um, well, for those of you who have ever been to Bryn Mawr, they're kind of famous for doing opera on the big screen. And so we thought this would be the perfect venue for you to see a stage play that was, you know, not only staged, but directed for the big screen. So this is part of our new media day offerings. Um, new media day is just a sample of digital Jewish storytelling um, that you know, could be either new media, media arts, um, or just digital storytelling through social media channels. And this is one of our selections. And we really hope that you give it a try because we think you're going to love it. Um, so what the story is, is um, it's based on a true story, the 1939 voyage of the MS St. Louis, in which nearly a thousand German Jewish refugees sought refugee or sorry sought sanctuary in Cuba um, but they were barred from entry so they spent the next month just on this ship unable to find sanctuary anywhere nobody would take them in it's an absolute incredible play enthralling from beginning to end so I do hope that you will get tickets and just remember that this venue is um, vaccination only um, you must have your cards and your IDs you'll be checked at the door and they'll be so social distancing in the theater. Okay, so the adventures of Saul Bellow. 
So bibliophiles, Saul Bellow readers, and fans of the Jewish American experience will love this biographical documentary about the life of a 20th century Jewish American literary icon. And the director weaves excerpts of the author's most influential novels in a very creative way that I think you'll like. And he combines this with recollections from Bellow's contemporaries. Um, and you get a little bit of his personal life, um, his work ethic, um, some of his stances on um, the American Jewish experience, race, gender, um, and really what better place to see this film than the National Museum of American Jewish History. Um, so we hope that you'll join us on Monday, November 15th at 7 p.m. in Old City. Yes, I sh we should add to, I think I forgot to say, at the Jewish Museum, uh, masks well it's kind of obvious but yeah masks are also required at the jewish museum as you guys know they have been closed i think for a while so we're really excited to be going back there we're going to be in the same uh space where we always show the movies downstairs uh but yes bring a mask <laughs> most important uh thing so yes, long story short, insularity and inclusion in American Jewish communities. We are, th this is a two part, like a double feature that we are showing. These are both short films and unorthodox education and we made matzo balls for the revolution. Uh, two different yet oddly very similar movies. Um, and of course we're calling these long shorts because they are literally long shorts. They're both uh, like about 30 to 40 minutes long, which pretty much makes up a feature film. We're gonna be showing these at the Ethical Society. And an Orthodox education is a very thought provoking film. It's meant to spark conversation. It's meant to get you very, very, you know, I don't want, I don't know if like angry is the right word, but you know, it's, it's a film that's definitely going to get you talking. It basically, we basically follow uh, how schools in ultra Orthodox Brooklyn, so many of them aren't teaching their kids uh, secular education. And the film really just dives into this. Joe Coleman does an amazing job uh, in just a matter of like 30 minutes, he manages to make a statement and it's very, very important. We Made Matzo Balls for the Revolution is a bit of a lighter film, I'd say. It's a bit of a palate cleanser, very nostalgic movie. Uh, it's basically a documentary about um, the kosher kitchen, which was created by a bunch of Jewish students in 1975 in Washington, D.C., during you know the hippie era and everything like that uh such a lovely fun movie this uh has i think it made its premiere as well at the washington dc jewish film festival uh very good very very fun and yeah these both definitely just i always use the word conversation starter because these both definitely do that Simla Habana, another one, of, I know I shouldn't be picking favorites because, you know, I love all these moves, of course, but Simla Habana uh, is probably unlike any film that we're showing in the festival this month. Uh, it is so hypnotically filmed. It's so beautifully done. The story is almost like Shakespearean in a way. We basically, it's set in Cuba. We follow this young couple. Uh, he's a dancer and they both, you know, they're not living in good conditions. They're living in very poor conditions in this, in this bad neighborhood. And they both just honestly want to live the American dream. They want to move and make all this money and, you know, start a family. And they basically devise this, this plan to basically seduce have him seduce one of his students uh, and then have him, you know, she can then bring him to Canada where he can make money and, and everything like that. I don't even want to like tell anything more. I, I just need to tell you guys just honestly <laughs> walk in surprise because this film just from the opening shot to the end, you literally cannot look away. The dancing is incredible. The, the, the style of it all is amazing. The performances are like, you don't even know like if these are actors or real people, you know, it's just that real and, and honest and authentic and you're going to love it. You're absolutely going to love it. Well, you'll learn from the Q&A if you watch the bonus content, if you're watching this virtually, that um, 
the main actor, he is indeed a dancer. So if mm -hmm. you're wondering why he's so good, he's actually one of Cuba's, I learned he was one of Cuba's most famous, like world renowned dancers. And he actually oh, yeah. tones it way down for this movie to be this role. Oh yeah, yeah, he's amazing. Okay, so Not Going Quietly is our closing night film. And I'm telling you, there will not be a dry eye in the room. It is so incredibly moving. It tells the story of social justice warrior, Andy Barkin. And unfortunately, Andy was diagnosed with ALS, but when he was, he took this better than I could ever take this myself, or I can imagine anyone I know taking this. Um, he actually took to the streets and created a people-powered healthcare movement from the ground up. And as his condition worsened and his voice eventually does fade, his message remains clear and bold. He is not going quietly, not until every American has access to affordable and comprehensive health care. So we hope that you'll join us on closing night, Saturday, November 20th at 7 p.m. at the National Museum of American Jewish History, just to join us for this unbelievable film that you won't forget. And after the screening, we're really lucky to have the Feinstein Center for American Jewish History, um, their curated panel. Um, I will be moderating this panel with the director and there's two surprise guests. We're going to have one guest who's not local, but they're going to join us from on Zoom. And then the other guest is local and he's somebody that's very much involved um, in healthcare advocacy here in Philadelphia. So it's going to be an outstanding evening film panel, um, just being around a lot of socially conscious folks that care about social justice. So please join us. Yes, that this film will shake you. Yeah, get ready. So yeah, we're those are all the in-person screenings. We're now turning to the virtual live streams. Now you're gonna see a few films that are repeated here, so we won't talk about them, but we're just going to show you. And again, virtual live stream, that means that it is one time and one time only. So if it's Sunday, it activates at 7 p.m., you got to watch it at 7 p.m. If you get to the, you know, your computer or your TV at 7.10, you miss 10 minutes of the movie and you can't go back. So it's very much, I keep telling people, it's kind of like, like the pre DVR days, like when, you know, something is like live on TV and like, you have to, you know, make sure that you don't miss it. That's kind of what we're trying to do here. It's new. We're just going to try it, see if it works. And, uh, you know, if you guys don't like it, we'll never do it again, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So these are the films. So yes, I think yeah. I'm, I'm talking now, right? A little, yeah. About this. Sorry. We talked earlier about who was talking about what, but take it away. <laughs> yes, Wet Dog, as we uh, discussed, yes, you can see this in person or you can live stream it uh, from your home Sunday, November 7th, 7 p.m., right on the dot, though. Don't miss it. And then Neighbors, I am also talking about, yes, <laughs> Neighbors is um, our centerpiece film. This film, very important to remember, you can only live stream it. Uh, we can only do that for this. Do not miss this movie. I absolutely 100% mean that. This is one of the most like powerful films you will see in the festival. I believe it was submitted for uh, Best International Feature Film at the Oscars. I don't know if it made it. I have to double check. But um, yeah, everything about this movie is perfect. Everything. Um, it's basically a coming of age story. It's set uh, after Israel became a state. It's set in this town in Syria. We follow this young boy. This young actor right here is like gives one of the best child performances you will ever see. Uh, the town that he lives in, the government uh, basically turns into this very anti-Zionist, Arab nationalist uh, uh, party. I forget the name. I think it was the Ba'ath party. That was the name of it. And it's all true. This all really happened. Uh, it's a disturbing movie. It's, it's a frightening movie. Um, but, you know, it's a film. Not frightening as in horror. No, not frightening as in scary. No, I mean, I mean, frightening in that, you know, it's scary to see how 
unfortunately, there are a lot of kids in countries that are taught, this, you know, t- to hate, you know, from such a young age. And what's so remarkable about this movie is that this child's performance is just so good because he is confused. He doesn't really understand, like, why do I have to not like Jews? Why? But, you know, in, you'll see in the movie, his neighbors are Jewish and he's like obsessed with them and he loves them. He treats them as family. So he kind of just gets so, you know, confused you know morally and and it, it just yeah from opening to end it it, it just it is absolutely outstanding we're so excited to show this movie um yes but just definitely don't miss it <laughs> if you plan on watching it saturday november 13th 7 p.m all right potions 101 the enchanted world of eastern european elixirs so you're probably wondering what this is well this is another new media day selection and this is happening on facebook live and matt is going to make sure that it is also simulcast to our platform at some point i don't know right there and then matt can explain this after i go (laughs) um but basically it's happening on facebook live sunday november 14th at 6 p.m so if you're on facebook please please join in it's going to be just such a fun event So if you love storytelling, the idea of Russian babushkas scouring the forest picking herbs and berries for their homemade botanical elixirs, this is the Whimsical Herbal Cocktail Hour Mixology Workshop for you. This New Media Day virtual program offering hosted by Rebecca Ansis, founder of Elixirology, and you may recognize the word Ansys due to it being my last name. This is my sister. Um, She kind of does this as a side hustle. Um, And she takes you on a wild rollicking ride through the fascinating and sometimes kooky world of Eastern European folk medicines. So check it out again, Sunday, November 14th at 6 p.m. on Facebook Live. Facebook too also just, and I'll put this in the chat uh, as you're talking, but yes, you need to like our Facebook page or follow us in order to get notified about it. So um, yes, definitely do that. Yeah. And Matt, do you want to tell them like how they can see it on our platform? Like, are you putting it up afterwards? Like after the recording happens, you're putting it up on the platform? Yes. So I'm going to figure out a way to simulcast it. So it will be on the platform uh and also simulcast on Facebook. If, if you guys aren't on Facebook, it's totally fine. I'm going to, yeah, it is going to be simulcast, uh, both, you know, both at the same time on CineSend, which is the name of our platform and uh, Facebook. Yeah. And this is a free event. So as long as free, you register, yeah. as long as you register, you could either just tune in on your own on Facebook or you'll get the voucher code to watch it on our platform. So that's what we mean that'll be in both places. Um, So yeah, if you register, you'll get more information about this. Um, So the, um, this is again, another new media day offering, and this is happening directly after Potions 101. So Sunday, November 14th at 7 p.m. This is gonna be, however, on our platform. So when you register, you'll get the voucher code, or if you have an all access pass, you'll just see it. Um, But you have to be there at 7 p.m. because it's a live stream. So it's only happening at 7 p.m. Sunday, November 14th. So this is another, Um, Awesome opportunity to sample unique and innovative Jewish and Jewish inspired digital storytelling as part of PJFM's second annual New Media Day. Um, We hope you'll join us for this adult only live stream showcase of burlesque performances, Jewish storytelling and short films on the theme of Beshert Romantic Destiny. So put on your sexiest pair of pajamas Pour yourself a glass of red wine and join Roxy Roz, our guest curator, and her friends for a wondrous evening. Come on, what are you waiting for? Destiny awaits. <laughs> I know I'm being very silly, but destiny awaits. That was cute. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. So um, our last live stream is not going quietly. So yes, if you're not comfortable coming to the Jewish Museum, totally fine. You can watch this from home. Just be advised, though, that it is one time only, 7 p.m., Saturday, November 20th. So we're going to now move into streaming all the films that are streaming November 7th to the 14th. 
week one. I just want to quickly say too, the way it works is if you buy a ticket for a film that is streaming during week one, you will get all the films during week one that you're about to see, they will all activate on November 7th in the morning. I think I made it for like 10 a.m. So the way it works is if you buy a ticket for a film, one hour before 10 a.m., you will get an email that will contain a link, a voucher code that is, that will take you to the movie. And it will be available beginning at 10, if that makes sense. So, and again, the awesome thing, you have all week to watch any of these films. Last year we had it scheduled, so you only had like two days. This year we're giving you guys more days. So we've got a lot of good ones too. All right, so Ahed's Knee. Um, I have to warn you, this is not going to be an easy watch, but I assure you, if you allow it to be, it will be among the festival's most rewarding and memorable experiences. This film has been shown in the world's most prestigious film festivals. Um, we're talking Toronto, Telluride, Cannes, um, you know, of that caliber. And in fact, in 2021, it won the jury prize at the Cannes Film Festival. So if you're not familiar with Nadav Lapid, the director of Ahed's Knee, he is at once Israel's most celebrated film directors and most controversial. Um, why is he controversial? Well, here, here's the stuff that's not controversial first. First of all, he's a lover of words, art, and truth. So if you're into art house cinema, this is going to be your this is going to be your film. If you're into art house cinema, you know, very poetic, lyrical style, incredible, unique cinematography. This is the type of film you'd want to see. But the reason why he's controversial is because he takes this sort of sensitive, frenetic, bold, no holds bar, completely frank, um, approach to topics ranging from nationhood, masculinity, and the moral obligations of the artist. And in this film, it's once again an autobiographical meta journey um, where the main character is actually kind of like a stand in character for the director himself. And the director made this, Nadav said in the interview with our artistic chair, Iris Dreschler, he said that this film was made with just utter urgency. His mother, who was his longtime collaborator on all of his films, like the kindergarten teacher, synonyms, um, the policeman, um, she had just passed away from cancer. And within a few weeks, he wrote this entire script in like two weeks. He just like it all poured out of him and it was just very raw. And you'll see in this film that the character is going through this kind of existential kind of crisis and in part it's because of his mother's death um because in the film um you know it follows um art follows film follows life follows you know the whole thing is entangled but anyway so the character in the film he um is going through some kind of P ptsd not just because of his mother just dying but because of all the experiences that brought him to that film screening in the middle of nowhere in israel where this um curator who was putting on his film, you know, who was just trying to be nice and was a total fangirl of his work, um, wanted to share his beautiful art with her community and sort of it all came pouring out onto her. And so, like I said, it's a very complex viewing, but it is so worth it. There's going to be um, questions that you're going to ask. You're going to reflect in a way that most films don't ask you to reflect. Um, so please give it a chance. Definitely get a ticket and tell us what you think. We're very curious to know what you think of this film. And it's screening again November 7th to the 14th. Yeah, there's no other director like Nadav Lapid. No other. And American Birthright, Matt, you know, had gone over in the in-person screening. So once again, if you're interested sort of in this sort of female journey of spirituality and finding oneself and just trying to figure out what your views are and, you know, what you stand for, this is the film for you. Very universal message and just a very light, fun, personal film. Yeah, Betrayed is, is just absolutely a 
full on masterpiece, in my opinion. Uh, this is a Norwegian film. It is a Norwegian Holocaust film. It is based on a true story. You know, it, it's, it's a, we basically just follow this family uh, in Norway, a Jewish family in Norway as, as you know, Hitler's reign of terror is growing and growing. And, and it's a history lesson in a way. Um, and it is also a cautionary tale uh, for a lot. I think, you know, there are a lot of people when they think about the Holocaust, they don't necessarily think about Norway and all the Norwegian Jews that were murdered. And also a lot of the, you know, police in Norway and a lot of the Nazi sympathizers in Norway. We showed another film similar to this, <laughs> excuse me, to this last December called The Crossing. Uh, this film though is, you know, such a big budget production film. It was a huge hit in Norway uh, earlier this year. Uh, incredibly well acted, uh, you know, obviously very upsetting to watch, but so, you know, unbelievably important. And it really, it sticks with you. This one is definitely unforgettable. And shorts, yes. So as you notice, uh, we are showing, we're showing a lot of shorts this season. So we went over long story shorts. That's just two shorts. We also have two other shorts programs. So Jewish Shorts Program 1 is going to be streamed during week one. We're showing six utterly different, unique, weird, uh, funny, dark, uh, absurd movies. You know, we have a film like Cinema Rex, which is animated and so lovely. We have a movie called White Eye that was recently nominated for the Academy Award for Best Live Action Short. We have a film like Legacy, which is uh, a powerfully acted Hungarian uh, black and white, kind of like a noir Holocaust thriller. Ms. right here, or Miss, excuse me, is a British very dark comedy, which um, I don't, yeah, I can't give anything away about that. You're just going to watch it and be utterly surprised. High Score uh, is a very intense, uh, but, you know, unfortunately, very accurate depiction of, of uh, some very far right, uh, what's well, depiction of a very far right man who, young man who absolutely, you know, hates any minority, hates any Jew, anybody, <laughs> basically, uh, but it's such a visceral film, uh, really, I think the most visceral one out of all of these. Mazel Tov Cocktail uh, is a hit at Jewish film festivals worldwide. It is so outrageous. It's funny, it is crazy, it is irreverent, it's, it's absurd, it is uh, comical. It's a German film, it basically is a day in the life of this, uh, it's a narrative, a day in the life of this uh, Jewish teenager. And he talks about what it means to be Jewish in Germany. Uh, and oh, it Russian, is, Russian Jew Jewish, excuse me, I'm sorry, Russian Jewish. He talks about what it's like to be, uh, you know, a, a Jew in, in Berlin. And it, it's it's just wild. That's honestly the best word I can describe it, uh, describe for it. So definitely, I know not everybody is into shorts. Some people prefer features. This selection though is positively amazing though. So could yeah, not it's like it every more. single film is so good. So yeah, it's just really worth it to see this program. Yeah. Okay, so Kiss Me Kosher is a really fun palate cleanser. So if you've just watched a bunch of serious films, disturbing <laughs> films in the festival, you will want to see this one because it is a romantic comedy from Israel and it starts the lovely Moran Rosenblatt, who you might recognize from Wedding Doll and Fauda. And it's another kind of sort of subversive take on interfaith relationships and in the film she plays a lesbian woman who falls in love with a um, German woman and the two want to get together but obviously their families give them a lot of problems and headaches along the way um, and I won't say anymore because you you should watch this modern day take on um, relationships long distance um, interfaith relationships all right yeah You'll love it. It's, it's impossible to not enjoy Kiss Me Kosher. Um, so Leaving Paradise is probably one of the most unique documentaries that we're screening. Um, it takes place in Brazil and it's about this very, very large family. The family patriarch, his dream was to sort of start a communal farm 
um, in rural Brazil. And after saving up for a very, very long time, he takes his 15 children out of the city and moves to this farm. And in this adventure, one of the children who was studying abroad in Israel of all places, um, she comes back and with her inspirational stories and um, the research that she undertakes when she gets back, the family realizes that they actually have Jewish roots. And the kids in this family just become obsessed with their um, Jewish heritage. They take it very seriously. They actually start thinking they want to convert to Judaism. And this documentary sort of explores all of the reasons for that and the reality of that decision. One of the kids wants, who is getting married wants to actually make Aliyah to Israel. But really, it's just a, I would call it a social commentary film, because it, it sort of um, takes apart what a utopia is and whether a utopia can actually exist and what is the psychological ramifications of such a life. So if you're interested in sort of anthropological, psychological studies of family or utopias, um, I would definitely watch this film, but it's just absolutely fascinating um, on so many levels. Do you want to add to that, Matt? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, you covered it all, but yeah, this is a film, like you watch it, you watch the trailer too. And you're like, is this just like a family movie? What, what is this exactly? And, and the more you watch it by the end, your jaw is just like to the ground. It, it, it's such a fascinating film about patriarchy and Judaism and, and the ethics in Judaism and, and, so many things you, you, you could like have a whole class on this film. It true. You know, you could teach a class about it. It is. Yeah. It, it's huge. Absolutely huge. So the lost brothers. Oh my goodness. This movie is, you know, it, it's crazy how low budget movies can be so incredibly moving and powerful. This one uh, was screened, uh, or I, I believe in Israel, they showed it on TV one night and it's very, very small. It's about an hour long, have tissues near you. This film is so beautiful. It's so moving. It is so just like, you don't expect to be that moved by it, you know, when it begins. And then by the end, you just, yeah you're going to be like you will be like bawling like we're not yeah. joking you will be bawling and like I was like actually like audibly extremely loud watching this crying <laughs> we don't want to scare you guys though if you cry it's not like you know depressing no this is just a beautiful story about this uh 72 year old man who discovers that he has two Polish siblings and he meets up with them all these years later and he forms such a close, it's a documentary too, he forms such a close relationship with his one brother, uh, this man here on the right. Uh, it, it's just, yeah, literally like in the description, it's a meditation on the fragility of life, grief and gratitude. Uh, I, I, I cannot recommend it more. It's absolutely amazing. Murinau or Murinov, that's actually how you're supposed to pronounce it. Uh, this is, honestly, it's like a ghost movie in a way. Uh, not like a scary movie, not like a haunted house movie, but it is a movie, I think, not necessarily about ghosts, I'd say, but about how the past is always there in any location that you go to where there's been a tragic past or a really happy past whether you believe in ghosts or not, whenever you go there, you always feel it. You know, there's a lot of people that say that have told me at least that, you know, when they visited Auschwitz, they have just felt like the sadness just come over them. And Murnau is a really unique, fascinating film about uh, the town Murnow in Poland, which uh, after World War II, they basically built over everything. They built over all the debris, all the dead bodies, everything. And the film is a documentary set in modern day and it shows you the residents of the town and how they feel and, and these experiences that they've had. And I, I know what you guys may be thinking. You may be thinking, is this like a ghost hunting show movie or whatever? It's not at all. What it ends up being is this absolutely astounding film about 
how it really is just hard to forget the past and how we really can never forget. And it also, you know, opens your eyes to a lot of lingering anti-Semitism that still exists in Poland today after all these years. So the filmmaking is just absolute perfection. Uh, it is bone chilling, honestly. This film, I think out of all the films has stuck with me the most. You, you won't forget it. Yeah. Okay. and. The one Sorry. thing about Murr now is, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but one thing about that film um, that we've had this director before and he's always made great documentaries, but this is just his most expert documentary. I am mean, even the animator that um, illustrates like through these drawing animations, how the town was rebuilt over, um, you know, the dead, um, those that perished there. Even that is just really interesting in and of itself to watch. But what is just the the, po the poetry of how these um, citizens today actually truly believe that they are seeing apparitions of the people who perished from Murnau, you know, decades ago, that they're seeing and they say that they can prove this and you really do like even if you don't believe in this even if you don't believe in the supernatural um you don't believe in ghosts you know and you're very um, incredulous like as you're listening to them you really do believe what they're saying is true absolutely true so it's almost in um sort of on some level like a mystery as well because you have to ask yourself what you believe as you listen to their stories yeah yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> so The New Jew is a limited Israeli TV series, and it's hosted by one of Israeli's famous actors and comedians, Guri Alfi. Um, he actually moved to the United States in 2018, and when he was when he first moved here, he was just fascinated by all the different ways that he saw American Jews embrace their heritage and practice their traditions and connect to their Judaism. And it inspired this four episode TV series. And so as you're watching, you follow Guri around the country and he meets so many different types of Jews. Um, everybody is coming from a different place, but what one of the common commonalities between everybody is they're saying that in America really being Jewish is being Jewish by choice you have to have intentionality you have to want to be Jewish you, you're just not going to be Jewish you have to put effort into it um but he shows you that that effort is just so beautiful and worthwhile and it shows the pluralism the multiculturalism that exists and I would say that mostly everybody in the show that you meet has a lot of positive things to say, um, except for um, one gentleman who whose view is not so positive, but I don't want to get anybody down. So I'm just going to let you watch the show and see for yourself. Um, but one of the unique things that we did for this series is we um, created our first ever PJFM community panel. So we invited a bunch of wonderful folks from the Philadelphia area. A lot of young people participated. Um, they were given um, a, you know, a private screener to watch all four episodes in advance of the festival. And then we all got together on Zoom and we used this series as a tool to talk about Jewish identity today. And it is fascinating to watch this panel because you'll get to hear what your fellow Philadelphia um, community thinks about Ju their Jewish identity and some of the things that they don't usually get to talk about, we actually delved into. So I encourage you to watch this series and definitely watch the panel when you're done. Yeah, so funny and just so fun. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's totally this. irreverent and hilarious too. So yeah, if you yeah. like that kind of thing, you'll like the series. Awesome. I'm just checking the time and we only have a few minutes left. So anyway, the last film, yeah, the last film that we're streaming during week one is Plan A. Uh, if you love good old fashioned revenge thrillers, World War II thrillers, this is absolutely perfect. It, uh, has every you know uh, uh what's it called it, it it encapsulates like 
every single thing that you love about revenge thrillers. Uh, we basically follow this young man played by August uh, Deal. I can't, don't know if I'm saying his name right. You may remember him. Ironically, he actually played a Nazi in Inglorious Bastards. There's a very bloody scene with him and Michael Fassbender, which I won't talk about, but um, he plays a Holocaust survivor. He's lost his whole family. He's mad. He wants revenge. He ends up joining uh, this small group of other Holocaust survivors called the Nakam, which did exist, uh, and they plan to annihilate the entire, uh, more you know, all the German towns kids included, all the non-Jewish, you know, people that they claim were responsible for the six million Jews that were murdered. It's a film that is riveting. It is thrilling. It is, you know, also a big, uh, it makes you really think about, you know, how far people are willing to go and, you know, how they kind of actually pause for a moment, you know, it, it, it's because it, they don't know if it's actually right. Uh, it's just simply, yeah, a good movie. And of course, uh, any Schiesel fans here, Michael Aloni uh, uh, is also in it. So um, yeah, everybody loves him. I just got my mom the Schiesel and she's like, has like a diehard crush on Michael Aloni. So he's in this. The whole film is in English too. If, uh, people don't like to read subtitles. Very good. So yes, we're going to move on to week two and live. We might have to talk a little faster because, um, yes. Yeah, so these, this is week two. These were the films that are streaming from November 14th to the 20th. Same deal as before. If you buy a ticket for any of these films on Sunday, November 14th in the morning, you will receive a link to that film. You'll have until November 20th to watch it. So yes, this is me. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, 100 million views. Uh, probably the most reverent, uh, wildly comedic films that we are showing uh, in the festival this season. It follows the director and the subject here, Itamar Rose. He is a wild character. Uh, so wild. You'll even see in his video intro that he sent us. It's just, he's hysterical. He is this comedian who is really fascinated by social media and, and YouTube culture and TikTok culture, because it's so crazy how nowadays, you know, you can post a video of yourself being an idiot on YouTube. You can post a video of yourself doing something stupid on YouTube or TikTok or Twitter or whatever, and you can become famous by it. You look at so many people that have become like millionaires from it. And it's a film that is actually, you know, it's funny, it's it's dark at times too, but you know, it, it also really does get you thinking. And by the end you go, oh my God, like, it's just amazing the world that we live in right now. We are literally so addicted to our phones and, and, and selfies and everything like that. And that's what Itamar, you know, discovers really. And, you know, he also wants to become a YouTube sensation himself. So he, he meets a lot of crazy characters and it, it, it's a weird movie. It really is a weird movie. Um, but, you know, it's a film that is so entertaining from start to finish. And, you know, it, it also, it's that type of movie where, you know, you don't need to like it tomorrow. You don't need to really agree with what he's doing. Uh, but the whole time you really are, it opens your eyes to this just crazy culture that, you know, we're living in, not just nationwide, but worldwide. Yeah. And it's really just informative. You learn a lot about the YouTube industry and like the social ramifications. So it's like, again, it's like one of those social commentary films, um, very educational. And it's the first of our new media day offering. So this is part of new media day. Mm -hmm. So Liv, yeah, this is you. We're doing one after the other. Oh, I thought this was you. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so 200 meters is, it's it's a absolutely beautiful Palestinian film. It's by a Palestinian filmmaker. The reason that we're showing a Palestinian film by a Palestinian filmmaker in our Jewish film festival is because we really wanna show these different viewpoints, especially, about Israel, because Israel is just such a, you know, huge part of um, being a Jewish person anywhere in the world today. Um, you know, whether it's right to do so or not, Israel is always connected to American Jewry. And so we want to just have people understand all of the different 
ways to see Israel from different point of views. And so we really thought this was a humanistic story, um, very moving. And it's a simple premise. It's a Palestinian father who is basically trying to get to his son who's in the hospital um, only 200 meters away across the border wall. And the way that this movie is, it's very genre bending. So one minute you're watching this very um, subtle family drama, um, very poetic. And the next minute it's like, a, like a thriller, like really an action packed thriller. And the next moment, it's like a road trip movie that's very comedic. So there's all these different elements and it's so fast paced and compelling. It's it's just a wild ride from beginning to end. So we thought that the audience would love it. We talked to the director and he, he was just such a wonderful person to speak to. Um, he very much is so happy to have a Jewish film festival show the film. We're not the first Jewish film festival, but he's so happy to share his film with Jewish film festivals because he knows that without Jewish film festivals, it's very unlikely that, um, you know, audiences like ours will be exposed to the Palestinian narrative and stories like this. Um, and we're very much, you know, for pluralism and multicultural viewpoints here at the festival. So we we hope you'll check it out and let us know what you think. It was also Jordan's Oscar entry for uh, best foreign language or best international feature film. Yeah, really good movie. Saul Bellow, uh, as we said, you can see it in person on uh, Monday, November 15th, or you can just stream it from home anytime during week two. Exile and Redemption, a neo-Hasidic rock opera. I mean, right off the bat, what is what a neo-hasidic rock opera what does that mean it's true we've never uh i've only been here for a few years olivia i don't know you've been here longer i don't think we've ever shown a movie like this before this is a free movie too uh it is basically a collection of music videos by Arie shalom this is him in that picture he is the filmmaker he is an incredible musician he works for the Hevra, which is this young professional Jewish group here in Philadelphia. Uh, funnily enough, they actually, they do trips to Israel, uh, Israel every year. And Olivia and I on separate years got to go with them. So they're amazing. REA reached out to us about uh, his film that he made. It is such, you know, like it's an abstract film, but it's meant to be. It's a beautiful, beautifully shot film. Uh, beautifully shot in black and white. The music is like so beautifully. I keep saying beautiful. I can't think of any other word, but um, yeah. Very he, spiritual. Very spiritual. It's a very spiritual movie. Uh, it is, you know, every, uh, it's basically divided into like chapters and each one, you know, revolves around the theme in Judaism. Uh, and yeah, it's just, it, it's, it's just absolutely amazing. Honestly, it, it just, it's like a movie, like you can honestly watch it. And then later on, you can just, you just want to like buy the soundtrack and listen to the music. He's fantastic. So yeah, we really hope you guys check it out. Yeah. And that one was a, again, a part of new media day. Mm -hmm. Yep. And free. <laughs> so I guess, um, yeah. 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 So journey of the lost, we already went over, but this film, if you don't see it at Bryn Mawr, you can also see it um, during week two of the festival. So catch it from November 14th through the 20th. Mm -hmm. uh, Jew oh yeah, I guess I'm going to, yeah. So Jewish shorts program two, this is our second, uh, well, third technically pro uh, shorts program that we're having. Again, I mean, pretty much everything I said about the first shorts is the same here. These are such different, uh, films from all across the globe. We have a heart-wrenching film called Hazak, the story of Rudy Dukes about uh, this incredible rabbi performing acts of tikkun olam who is in the hospital with COVID. The Moyol was shown at the South by Southwest Film Festival. It's a very funny, quirky, dark comedy. A Friendly Man is an Israeli documentary about one of the most eccentric uh, documentary subjects you will ever see in a film. I won't even give anything away. A Head Shorter is a Holocaust film uh, with truly, honestly, remarkable twists and turns. It's it's not, you think Holocaust story and you think it's going to be like any other one. This one is so different. It's animated. It's in English as well. 
<sighs> Absolutely incredible. Susam is a film from Turkey, which we like never get films from Turkey. Uh, it's all filmed in one shot. It is a very funny, very realistic film about um, the struggles of the Sabbath and how, you know, you can uh, use electricity uh, if you choose not to. <laughs> and very unique film. Space Torah takes you literally to outer space. It's a documentary about uh, Dr. Jeff Hoffman, who went to outer space uh, and actually read from the Torah. I believe he's the only man who actually has ever read from the Torah in outer space. So we literally, uh, you know, it's a total mix of genres. You'll be moved, you'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll, you'll be, you know, just amazed. So yeah, definitely check it out. And I'll just add to, yes, long story short, uh, we're showing it during week one, or no, no, I'm, I lied. We're showing it in person during week two on 17th at Ethical Society. If you don't want to come or if you can't come that night, you have all week to check out uh, these two shorts. Okay, so Shadow Country is another more like more serious, more complex film um, the way that Ahed's knee is. But this is a World War II Holocaust themed film, stunning black and white photography. It's about the small village on the Czech German border, and it has um, Czechoslovakian, German and Jewish citizens. They're neighbors who are kind of pitted against each other um, during the Nazi occupation. Um, it also shows what happens after World War II when neighbor turns against neighbor. And it's really just a journey into the human psyche and really what makes us human and um, what is sort of like the destruction of our humanity in a way um, when it comes to war. So it kind of just shows that in war, there's really no winners, everybody loses. Um, and for a, the society where we live today um, with all the divisiveness that we see right now and the way that our ideologies um, you know, reveal political leanings and pit us against one another. There's all sorts of crazy things happening right now. This film is just going to feel very, very timely um, to watch. But really, it's it, it has a hundred percent score on Rotten Tomatoes. It is like beloved um, and critically acclaimed. So if you like films, um, you know, like The White Ribbon, um, for instance, and Matt, what was the name of that Holocaust film that people walked out of in Toronto, the really difficult one? Oh, yeah. Well, it's not that intense. The Painted Bird. Um, yeah, The Painted Bird. Not as intense, though. I want to work. Not, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, not as nowhere intense, intense as The Painted Bird. I don't but think there's any film as intense as the painted no, bird. <laughs> no. But like, like from a cinematic standpoint, it has some similarities to the white ribbon and the painted bird and, and, you know, especially the mood of those two films at different points, yeah. um, but not as intense, but we definitely recommend this one. And it's gorgeously filmed in black and white too. Absolutely gorgeously filmed. Sin La Habana, same thing. You can stream it during week two, anytime, if you'd like to. Um, yes. Uh, yeah, Olivia, do you want to take this one? Um, yeah, so um, as part of New Media Day, we have a new series. This is the launch of a brand new series for PJFM. It's called Today's Storytellers Are Tomorrow's Changemakers. And our first edition of this new series is spotlighting a PJFM alum, um, Lacey Schwartz Delgado. She's the co-founder of TruthAid, which is a socially conscious production company. But you may recognize her as the director of Little White Lie, which we showed at PJFM, I believe in New Filmmakers Weekend in 2014. Um, so we sit down with Lacey, um, actually Warren Hoffman um, sits down with Lacey and he asks her, you know, how, how does she use storytelling to bring awareness to social justice issues? How does she use her platform um, to create change in society? And it's a fascinating new series. I think that Lacey and Warren are captivating to listen to. And she's just an incredible person, um, an incredible artist. So definitely tune in. It's a free program. I believe it's at four, 
p.m. Is this a live stream, Matt? No, this isn't. So this is already oh, going to be pre-recorded. So it's it's free. Yeah, if you want to register, you can watch it. Uh, and it's it available all week, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Correct. you can watch it anytime between November 14th and 20th. Mm -hmm. Tune into the Future is just a fun, stylish film. If you love sci-fi, if you love graphic novels, if you love, uh, those are pretty much the only like things I can think of at the moment. <laughs> sci-fi, honestly, sci-fi. This is just such a uh, such a stylishly made uh, autobiography of Hugo Gernsback, who is literally known as the inventor of science fiction, <laughs> the most influential influential nerd you've never heard of. It's very true, though. Uh, he is a Luxembourgish, I believe that's the right term. If you're from Luxembourg, man, uh, he was Jewish. He is responsible for uh, what was the comic book? The uh, the Amazing Stories, I think, was the name mm -hmm. of it. Yeah, and so many other things. The director Eric uh, Schokmel, he has like the most incredible animated scenes in it. You know, the the editing in this and the interviews and everything is just so well done. If you love autobiographies, this is just totally perfect. And um, again, you know, we love showing films about people that were so. Uh, impactful in, in, you know, parts of uh, culture that people have never even heard of. And like Hugo Gernsback is like the number one person. I mean, no one has heard of him. No one. And this film really opens your eyes. Yeah. And, and he totally was like the precursor to fan culture. So like, if you heard of um, these conferences um, and festivals like Comic-Con mm -hmm. where people get to meet all these sci-fi characters and buy memorabilia and all of that kind of stuff. Like he really started fan culture because he made it okay to be a nerd and love science fiction and love these fantastical stories. And he got people together that were into reading that and writing that. And he created, you know, a whole industry out of it. And what Matt was saying is absolutely true like the animation everything's done in that like pop style mm -hmm. of the time period where all of this came to be um so it's very stylistic and well done and you'll be captivated it's like a comic book almost like mm -hmm. the actual movie is like a comic book yeah um, so Women's Balcony, we're showing a sneak preview of this Israeli TV series. You may recognize the title because we did show the film, The Woman's Balcony, um, The Women's Balcony in Cinemondays a few years back, probably 2017. Mm -hmm. um, but they have turned the film into a TV show and we have a sneak peek of episode one and two to see if you like it. And we're pretty sure this is gonna come to a platform at some point like Netflix or Amazon. Um, I'm not sure when, but now you can have a taste of it. And um, the director brought all the characters back. There's new plot twists and new journeys for all of these incredibly brave and strong women. Um, you again, get a taste of the um, sort of more like modern orthodox Sephardic lifestyle um, in Israel because um, it takes place in the same exact neighborhood that the film took place in, um, the Bukharan quarter of Jerusalem. Um, so if you liked the film, you will definitely love the series. And if you've never seen the film, I think you will really enjoy it. It's very light, it's engaging, and it, it's, it's just fascinating if you don't know much about Sephardic culture in Israel it will make you like want to go to Israel right now. Like the, the scenes that they film in Israel are just absolutely amazing, yeah. So our last film that we are uh, gonna be streaming in week two is Jerusalem, the incredible story of Ethiopian Jewry. Now I didn't add this here, but we're also showing a short film uh, that's gonna be shown before this called Dreaming of Jerusalem. Both are very similar. They both deal with the history of Ethiopian Jews, the struggles that they face to, you know, immigrate to uh, uh, the Holy Land, um, you know, actually, as you guys are watching this now, last night we had the privilege of showing these films in person at the Annenberg Center and at in uh, the University of Pennsylvania. The audience loved it; they were incredibly moved by it. Um, you know, it's a it's it's a film that is meant to get you, uh, you know, going. You know, it's meant to spark a conversation. It's meant to really, uh, you know, teach you about the fact that you know this is a struggle that is still going on, you know, 
it, it, it's not like it just ended, you know, it, it's still happening. And the film is literally uh, like just, I, I guess it's almost like like a holy Bible. Like it shows you from the very beginning of, of you know, Ethiopian Jews and, and their, their hopes to get to Israel to the present day. It's so well done. And the, the short film Dreaming of Jerusalem very much deals with that. It's co-directed by Peter Descherny, who is the director of uh, cin the Cinema and Media Studies program at the University of Pennsylvania. He did a fantastic job. Uh, and yeah, this film, these films, both of them are, yeah, one of a kind, in my opinion. Yeah. And, and also um, the other local filmmaker who worked with Peter DeCherney, um, her name is Sosena Solomon. Um, she's also a professor at Penn and, and an artist as well. But what was really cool that was re revealed yesterday was that, you know, Peter was coming onto the project um, you know, as as a Jewish person that's familiar with the rituals um, that were taking place um, in Ethiopia, um, whereas Sosena was coming, um, she from a background where she is Ethiopian. She's not Ethiopian Jewish, but she is Ethiopian, so she's just a little bit more. Um, I, I guess, like connected to the culture and she was able to, um, you know, find a connection with the people and interview them and get them to feel comfortable and open up about their lives and share their customs and traditions. So it was really fascinating to watch how in a two week period, I think, um, these two filmmakers came in and were able to get such a up close and personal view of life um, in Ethiopia for um, these Jew Jews who, you know, are known as the Beta Israel and want to make Aliyah to Israel and be connected to their loved ones who, who are already in Israel, some for decades, actually, at this point. So we really recommend both films. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And that is it. Those are all the movies. This is a scene from Leaving Paradise, by the way, and it's like, Probably those are all like, the kids. Those are all the kids. And this is also like one of like the best film images probably ever. So I'm going to stop sharing. So I know that we have gone a little bit over time. We're now going to open, hold on, wait, stop share. Okay. So we're now going to open it up to you guys. If you guys have any questions at all, um, comments or anything, please let us know. Uh, I'm going to put right here in the chat. Um, it, well, okay, I'm going to list a few things. If you guys have any questions, send an email to us, info at phillyjfm.org. I just put it there. I'll get the email. If you have a question about a film, if you got a ticket, but you don't know if it went through, if you're interested in getting an all-access pass, or if you're a sponsor, but you don't know how to access our platform, anything, any anything techie or anything, just send me an email. I'm also going to put our number here. Uh, 215-545-4400. Now, typically our work hours are Monday through Friday, nine to five. Uh, during the film festival, it's probably going to be past five. <laughs> um, so we will try to get back to you as best we can. Um, if we're at an in-person screening, we have one staff person who is going to be at home taking calls, but we will definitely try to get to you. Again, if there's a film and it's not working, remember that uh, you're going to have it that whole week to watch it. So I see we have one question. Uh, you, <laughs> so yeah, jo yeah, yes, Joseph, you can. Um, Joseph, I'm going to, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just make a note here. So Joseph asked, um, he accidentally got a ticket for one film, uh, and he just needs one ticket, obviously. So he was wondering if he could exchange it for another film. You absolutely can. Uh, if that happens, again, just let me know. Let us know that that is, you know, give us a call and we can do it. it takes a second. So Joe, I'll email you after this. And uh, if you have a film picked out already, I can exchange it for you. So that's that. Um, Does anyone else have questions about any of the films? I just also want to say, um, I know that uh, our brochures, they're not the usual big, long, detailed brochures that you guys usually get. 
we were only able to send out much smaller brochures with just, you know, the list of the films and when they're, they're streaming and, and stuff. However, if you go to our website, I just put it there in the chat, phillyjfm.org, like Philly Jewish Film and Media. If you go to the homepage, all you have to do is scroll down a little bit. And on the left side, you'll see a brochure and it's much bigger. It's like our usual brochures that we send. It's the same thing. It's just basically a PDF file. You can scroll through each page. You can read more about the films. You can purchase tickets directly from there. It's very, very helpful. Um, if you're also on our website, if you just hover your mouse over where it says events, it'll drop down and you'll see three categories like streaming week one, streaming week two, in person. Uh, did I say three? I think I meant to say four categories and virtual live streams. And if you click on that, all those films will come up. So, um, so yes, Penina, Penina. yes, the answer is yes. There's a few films um, actually in the brochure that Matt was talking about that's on our website, the much larger digital brochure. We actually have a list in that brochure of the films that are available beyond the tri-state area. And mm -hmm. I believe 200 meters is one of them. Matt, do you remember the other one? I believe it's 200 meters, uh, 100 million views. Sin Habana. I think that's, uh, well, Exile and Redemption, that's a free movie, but Exile and Redemption, uh, you can watch that from anywhere. The best way to know about that is if you just go to the film's page on our website, you, you'll see right at the top, it'll say GeoBlock 2, and it's usually Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware. The reason we do this is because since COVID hit, all the film festivals, pretty much all of them have gone virtual. And if we're sharing films, you know, a basically a respectful way for all festivals to make enough profit is to enforce geoblocking. Because, you know, if we were to open the film up to everybody, another film festival that's showing it, they wouldn't, they might not make enough money from it, you know, because there are people who have already seen it at ours, that's, let's say. So typically it's just Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware. There are a few exceptions. Uh, sometimes distributors, like we said, they open it up to all of the US or worldwide even. Uh, but yeah, it's basically, um, I don't really have a great answer. You, you kind of just have to look at the films and, and see uh, what it says. But I do know, um, I'll just take it in, 100 million views. Yeah, and just um, all of the new media programs, they're available worldwide. So if you want to see, um, you know, the Potions 101 on Facebook Live, you can be anywhere around the world. Um, the Bashar Destiny Burlesque Short Film Storytelling Program, um, which is like pretty much a two hour program, pretty robust. Um, that's available worldwide. Um, and the storytell, um, the um, today's storytellers, today's storytellers tomorrow's yeah. change makers, that's available worldwide. So there are a number of worldwide um, programs beyond those three films we mentioned. Mm -hmm. And yes, Julie, this was recorded. So um, we will probably post this to our YouTube page uh, and you're more than welcome to you know, share it with anybody. I know we talked a lot, so I don't expect people to like sit through the whole thing, but, um, but yes, it was recorded. Uh, thank you, Libby. <laughs> and yes, yes, I just, we just answered your question. Yes, so it will, it, we will um, probably not tonight because it's late and you know, we're very hungry now, <laughs> but um, yeah, we will add it to our YouTube channel. Very quickly too, before you guys go, um, our, our trailer is officially done and it's on our YouTube. So I'm gonna put it right here in the chat. Uh, if you guys just click on it, you can watch it when we're done. It's, um, it's just the minute long trailer of it. Uh, that we put on YouTube, but yeah, you can watch it. It's a great montage. It shows you quick clips of everything. The longer trailer that has all the sponsors' names and everything, that's going to be played before every film that is streamed and also any film that we're showing in person. So uh, yes, definitely take a look at that. We have an amazing trailer editor who we've been working with who uh, helped put it together for us. And, uh, and Matt, did you put yesterday's live q a from pen on youtube yet uh, it is on youtube yes if you guys well yes I'll, I'll add that here as well um there are just obviously there might be some like spoilers for anyone who's interested in uh watching 
Jerusalem and the short film Dreaming of Jerusalem. You can watch this as a Q&A with the directors of Dreaming of Jerusalem that happened yesterday. And yeah, it was really good. It went fantastic. It's, it's close to a half hour long, but it's on our YouTube channel. That's another thing. Our YouTube channel, we have everything there. We have interviews from like, well, I want to say years back, but from like a few years back that, you know, we still have from when we were at the Gershwin Y and everything, all of our trailers, everything is on there. Uh, so definitely just search for us, Philadelphia Jewish Film and Media. And yeah, I think I did I cover everything? I feel like I'm missing something. Um, Does anyone else have any other questions? You guys, did you, did you guys find this helpful at all? Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, we know that it could be a little bit confusing. Um, some of the terminology is new. Um, so just remember, it's super easy if you just remember that live stream is, is like going to any event, except you're gonna be in your living room. You're gonna be watching it on your computer or your TV, but you have to be there at the exact time that it starts because you can't go back in time and see it after it already starts. So that's I, live yeah. stream. And on-demand streaming means you can watch it at any time during the seven day screening period. So the first week you can watch it from November 7th to the 14th. The second week you can watch it from November 14th to November 20th. So that's on-demand mm -hmm. streaming. And you know what in-person is. So that's that. Um, yeah. And yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I wasn't going to say anything. Oh. <laughs> I, I also just want to say. Um, we have a very well, complicated, but still looking forward to watching 14 yes. days worth of films. <laughs> good, good question, Dina. So yes, if you have a full pass, you don't need to. Well, it depends. If you got an all in pass, all in pass gets you access to both the virtual and the in-person events. So you're, you're good. If you have a virtual pass, it's the same thing, except you don't have access to the in-person events. So if you have a virtual pass, but you wanna see a film in person, you would, you would just need to buy a ticket for it. However, though, if you have a virtual pass, um, you don't need to register for any of the, uh, in, uh, any of the virtual films, because when you are buying your pass, it makes you, create a password and everything like that. And then, oh yes, good. this is actually a good question. Yeah, because when you are buying your ticket, you are basically making your own credentials to get access to our platform. So you'll see, it'll say, you know, put your email address, create a password. Once it does that, all you have to do is just go to this site. I'm gonna put it in the chat right here. This site here is like, Think of this as like our Netflix, watch.phillyjfm.org. I just put it in there. That is the site you're going to, oops, I'll just click the wrong okay, one. Matt, can you, can you put it on your web and then just share the screen yes. just so they can see it real quick? This is what it, uh, well, yes, hold on just a sec. Now my computer is a little weird and the logo is, is not this big. <laughs> it should not be this big. I have other people who told me that it's not that big on their page, but when you go to watch.phillyjfm.org, if you have an all access pass, or if you are a sponsor, you automatically should have uh, access to it. Here's what you do. You literally just sign in here where it says pass holders and sponsor login. Sometimes your computer or your device, it already remembers your login like this. It looks like it already does. So if I click on login, boom, takes me right to the platform. And you see how it looks very similar to Netflix or Hulu. It's all, you know, row by row streaming November 7th to the 14th. Wait. Wait, Matt, yep. I have a question for you. Why does it say Festival Plus up there? It shouldn't we, say Festival Plus. The, I know we don't have any Festival Plus films at the moment. So that's why oh. it's there first. You don't Can have they to worry delete about that because people will get confused. Okay. Well, we'll deal with that after that. Yeah. But okay, we're going to get rid of the festival. You, you, guys, you, guys don't have to, you guys don't have to worry about that. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that they can get rid of that because we do have a lot of Festival Plus. Festival Plus, as you guys know, those are films, or as you might not know, those are films that we show out of fest. So in between the Jewish Film Festival and Lindy Cinema Mondays. Um, but once you log in though, this is all you see. So it's very, very helpful. I'm going to go back though. 
If you got, oops, I'm not gonna go back. I'm gonna sign out, that's what I meant to say. Um, if you guys don't remember your password, if you forgot it, super simple, don't panic. You just click on forgot and it'll ask for your email address. You put it in there and then you'll get an email with directions to reset your password. And it takes just a minute. It's very, very quick. Our biggest suggestion is just write down your password somewhere and don't forget it. <laughs> That's the most important thing. The same thing goes if you buy a ticket for a film, um, in the email, you'll click on the voucher code and it'll take you right to the film. If you wanna do it another way though, you can also go to this website, watch.phillyjfm.org. You can enter the voucher code number right there using your keyboard and click submit and it'll take you right to the movie. So either way, a lot of people though, they don't do that because in their email, they already get the link that they can click on. but. If you have an all access pass or if you're a sponsor, this is the most important part right here. That's where you sign in. So, and the very last thing we should probably just mention quickly before we go is we do have a new app and the app is probably the easiest way to navigate this entire film festival because the way it's set up is you can search all the films by so many different avenues so you can search by theme like if you want to just see holocaust films if you want to just see israeli films you can search that way if you're only in town you know, during the first week of the festival and you only want to see in person films, you can search that way. If you only want to see films at home, only the second week of the film, film festival, you can find all those films streaming on the second week of the festival. Um, you can do it by date, you can do it by alphabetical order, like it's really the most easy to navigate way. So mm -hmm. if you download our app, how do you do this? So there is a QR code on our website on the home page, right, Matt? It's not a QR code. It, it's, it's a link, though. Oh, a the, link. The, the best way to do it is on your phone. If you go to the app store, mm -hmm. you can download us. You can search for us. Just search for Philadelphia Jewish Film and Media, or I think actually we're listed as Philly Jewish Film and Media. Anyway, we should come up, and then I'm just going to show you guys right here. This is the app. This is what it looks like. It, it's seriously the cool, hold on, let me get my camera. It is the coolest thing in the world. We have all these categories here. You can click on one, like Philadelphia Jewish Film and Media. It has all the films by different categories. Fall Fest by experience type. If you click on, you press on that. All these different films, you know, New Media Day, all the films. If you click on a film too, you can watch the trailer. You can add it to your calendar on your phone. You can buy tickets directly from your phone. It's you can share it thing. to your Facebook, like yep. everything. You can converse with other people about films on the app. It, it's so cool. I think the best way though, is just go on your app store on your phone and just search for Philly Jewish Film and Media. And again, it's free. You don't have to pay anything. Um, and it gets... Yeah, it gets added right there. So it's very, very, um, very cool. So yeah, I did, I just put the link in, but it is easier to just do it directly from your phone if you just go to the app store. Because if you do it online, it, it gets confusing, I think, because, you know, I mean, like it needs to get to your phone somehow. I don't really do it that way. So, but if you guys can, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, but, and, and the thing about it is, is that, Right now, everything sounds abstract, especially if you didn't participate in the virtual platform last year when we were only virtual, like it sounds strange to you. And that's totally understandable. Like every time I go to a virtual film festival, each film festival has some crazy set of rules and it's always different. And there's all these different things you have to do and levels of complexity you have to overcome. But once you actually do it, like after the first or second time, it's so easy and you absolutely understand everything. It's kind of just like, you know, like any activity that you haven't done before, it just is intimidating before you do it. But once you do it, it's, it's totally fine and you'll navigate it just fine. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, look, you guys have been amazing. We, we should probably close this out because I know we're way over time. But um, yes, if you guys need any help with anything, please just give us a call. Let us know. Uh, and yes, if you guys are coming to opening night, Sunday night, we'll see you there. Uh, Sunday is when, you know, all the films during week one will, will activate. So 
We hope you guys like our films. We hope you guys enjoy everything. And yeah, just just have a good time. Honestly, it's our 41st year. It's absolutely amazing. So we're just so happy to still be here. <laughs> it's been a weird two years and we're still here because of you guys. So thank you so much. Yep. Thank you all. Have thank a good you guys. night. Have a wonderful night. Bye-bye. <laughs>